Israel is not safe. The wider region is not safe. Yeah. And that is why, you know, my plea is for Hamas to surrender, for Hamas to give up power, for Hamas to release the hostages. At that point, we can have peace in the Middle East again. Yeah. But until that happens, it's it's just a fantasy land to think that whether it's at the UN or anyone else, calling for a ceasefire mm. automatically means there will be one. The UN Special Rapporteur on Human Rights in the West Bank and Gaza, Francesca Albanese, has published a report which says there are reasonable grounds to believe Israel has committed genocide in Gaza. Now, we can get the thoughts of Greg Smith now, the Conservative MP, a member of the Conservative Friends of Israel. That is to you, Greg. Good evening. Uh, I, good, I, think, yes. I think this letter is just a, a nonsense. Israel is an ally. Israel is a democracy. Israel is a country that suffered the most horrific terror attack on the 7th of October, the worst yeah. loss of Jewish life since the Holocaust. And they are seeking to defend themselves. They are seeking to live in peace. They are yeah. seeking to remove the terrorist threat on their own doorstep. Gaza is run by a prescribed terror organisation. And now we've got politicians running around saying we shouldn't support Israel in their right to defend themselves. Right. It's absurd. Right, that is a very clear statement of your position. Let me just look at that position for a moment, Greg, from one or two different different angles then. So under international law, self-defence is, of course, lawful. And Israel was attacked outrageously, atrociously, by Hamas, Hamas killers. Now, as the conflict goes on, well, the Palestinian Health Ministry, they say more than 25,000 People are being killed, mostly women and children. And even if, even if uh, Greg, you don't accept those numbers coming from the Palestinian Health Ministry, does that number seem to you proportionate to what happened, to the cause of this conflict? Because, of course, proportionality is also central to international law. So I, 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 no, I don't think anybody really knows the true number. Yeah, and we there are we can, things. though, take it as read that no. it is many thousands. We know that. Yes, 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 we can. Now, there are horrors of war. And those horrors of war upset all of us as human beings. Nobody wants to see anybody die. Nobody. But how can Israel not take the actions that they are taking to defend their own country, to defend their own people? Because we know full well from history that if the terrorists are allowed to continue to run Gaza, no matter how many ceasefires you have, no matter how many pauses you have, no mm. matter how long this goes on, Hamas will rearm, mm. and their stated aim is the destruction of the state of Israel. Their stated mm. aim is to kill people of the Jewish faith. So until they are removed from controlling Gaza, there can be no peace in the Middle East. There can be no security for Israel. We have got to get to a position where Hamas have been removed and that there is a good, maybe not democratic, because you know, there isn't a democratic history in Gaza, but a, a government that does not have its yeah. stated aim, the destruction of the state of Israel, in control there. Israel can't rest until right. that, that position is there. Right. I, I'm, I'm interested to hear your perspective, your own perspective as a, as a strong supporter of Israel on this question, though. Oh. And I'm going to throw in the fact that half the buildings in Gaza have been destroyed by Israeli bombardment. Coming from your According position... Uh, well, yeah, well, again, a massive, massive proportion of the buildings of Gaza have been destroyed by bomb bombardment. You've seen the aerial pictures, you know, you know that. Again, coming from where you come from, can that be called, in your mind, justified as proportionate? So here's, here's the thing with that. We know from uh, intelligence reports that we've seen, and I actually met with um, representatives of the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, just last week, we know the sheer volume of terror infrastructure that Hamas have cruelly, cruelly put under civilian infrastructure, under hospitals, under schools, under the very things that you would think are safe and yes. that in this country would take for granted. So uh, it's, a, it's a horrible reality of this conflict that the IDF mm. have to go there in order to destroy this terrorist infrastructure, in order to secure their, their own country and their yeah. own people. But on that, on that logic, would it be equally and similarly justified then if all the buildings in Gaza had been destroyed, if the death toll was twice what it is? 
No, I, look, I, I, I don't take this line that the IDF are somehow just indiscriminately uh, attacking Gaza. I, I have confidence from what I've seen with my own eyes. I went to Israel at uh, the start of this year, the first week in January. I met with the IDF. I mm. met with uh, victims uh, who survived the attack, be it the Nova Music Festival or um, uh, from uh, the kibbutz. I've met with hostage families. Yes. The IDF are being very, very targeted in what they are doing here. Now, mm. there will always be horrible realities of mm. war, and I will shed a tear over the loss of any innocent life as yeah. much as everybody else. It is a horrible reality. But there is a reality that sits underneath this. Yeah. Look, I, so I, long as terrorists yeah. run Gaza, Israel is not safe. The wider region is not safe safe yeah. and that is why you know my plea is for hamas to surrender for hamas to give up power for hamas to release the hostages at that point we can have peace in the middle east again yeah. but until that happens it's it's just a fantasy land to think that whether it's at the un or anyone else calling for a ceasefire mm. automatically means there will be one mm. hamas broke the last one hamas were the ones that broke the pause in november having not released all the hostages they'd agreed yeah. to release. They will do it time and time again. It's their stated aim. OK, I, I, I put it to you already that the destruction of half or anything like it, of the, of the buildings, living places, schools and mosques in Gaza, can it's difficult to describe that as, as precise and targeted, but we've, you've given your answer to that. The, the British government, which is, of course, you know, your party, they supported a resolution of the United Nations calling for an immediate ceasefire. I mean, you don't yeah. contend, Greg, do you, that the British government is saying, look, have a ceasefire and let Hamas carry on as before, because that's not part of that argument. So what the British government uh, voted for actually wasn't an immediate ceasefire. It was a pause. It was a pause for the remainder of Ramadan in order, in order to get the remaining hostages out. And that must be a priority at the moment. We're, mm. what, 170 plus days since the 7th of October, and there is still over 100 people held in brutal captivity by Hamas, who, it, it, they simply must be got out. That must be uh, the priority. Uh, the British government did not call, did not support anything yeah. that called for a an immediate ceasefire on any grounds. But there was a there was a problem with that, and it's something that I raised on the floor of the House of Commons yesterday to Andrew Mitchell. That of course, just calling for things in the UN doesn't always work out how you intend it to, because when it comes to the hostages, what happened within twenty four hours of that UN resolution? being passed. The Israelis had to pull their negotiators out of Qatar from the hostage negotiations due to what they described as delusional demands from Hamas, unreasonable demands from Hamas when it comes uh, to what they want for the release of those hostages. Mm. Hamas aren't interested in peace. They're not interested in doing a deal with Israel. The only thing I would put it to you and your listeners that Hamas are interested in is being given the time and space to rearm so they can do it all over again. OK, last question. I think I know the answer to this. But if Israel were to be found, were to be found um, responsible for a breach of international humanitarian law... Do you accept it would be the duty of the government, this is theoretical, this is hypothetical, it would be the duty of the government to cease arms supplies to Israel because those licences are contingent on that situation, aren't they? So, yes, you are right in the technical um, regulations that sit around uh, arms export licences, which are very, very tough in this country, I have to say. Uh, that would be extremely difficult. But I see no grounds from anything I've heard from real people I have met both in Israel and wider that Israel is going to be found in contravention of international law. That is something that I know there is a big body of people who protest on the march on the marches through London uh, with some pretty unsavoury placards that they want Israel to be found uh, in contravention of international law. But I don't see any evidence that they are. This is a country defending themselves. All right. Greg Smith, a Conservative MP, member of the Conservative Friends of Israel, thank you for joining us on the programme this evening.